Bruh, underdog has Russell Gage at 40 and a half receiving yards tonight. I know I made the lock of the millennium last week and the week before. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to start counting the bruh bets. We're one and one on the season, but this is easy lock of the millennium. All right, new millennium, new bet. Russell Gage over 40 and a half receiving yards tonight. Tonight against the Pats. No one likes Russell Gage. He's got no ceiling. Guess what? You don't need to be a ceiling player to have 41 receiving yards in a game. Russell Gage hits that easily tonight. Here's what's going to happen. One, Falcons are without Calvin Ridley. Falcons are very, very likely to be without Cordell Patterson, who is dealing with a mild high ankle sprain. They're playing the Patriots. You know what the Patriots do better than anybody? Because Uncle Bill does this better than anybody. Takes away their best weapon. Who's their best weapon? Any fucking Russell Gage. Probably not what you want to hear when you're betting on a guy, but it's Kyle Pitts. Okay. You're talking about Ridley down, Patterson down, probably Kyle Pitts, maybe getting the volume, but not a big game, not an efficient game, at least. If all goes according to plan and what happens on paper, stays on paper, which probably won't happen, but that leaves like nobody left, right? Russell Gage is still the one there behind Ridley, all right? Believe it or not, in terms of snap counts, in terms of routes run, yes, he's had a couple games where he didn't produce, but 40 and a half receiving yards when the entire offense's weapons are down, they're not going to have a running game. Mike Davis fucking stinks. Gallman only got on the field because they were getting burned the fuck out last week. So Russell Gage, over 40 and a half receiving yards, I feel fantastic about. Underdogfantasy.com, the link to hit this bet right now. First link in the description. If you're a first-time depositor, you're going to use the promo code BDGE. B D G E, and that's going to get you 100% deposit match. Okay, 100%. If you put down 50, you're getting 100 on your account. Throw it all, on Mr. Russell Gage. All right, week 11. Here's what we're talking about today. My rankings just dropped, which you can get on bdge.store forward slash community. We're going to look at 10 players who I have either higher or lower than consensus ADP or consensus expert rankings for the week. So the highest and the lowest guys, we're not going to look at everybody, but we're going to look at the guys in which I am the most different from the current expert consensus rankings for week 11. I don't think I've done that this year. This was something that I used to do in the past a little bit, and maybe I'll bring it back, uh, but I wanted to get something up for you guys on this video on this beautiful Thursday. It's almost 70 degrees, so I'm going to enjoy my day after this, but of course I need to make the content for y'all. And just on another note, I know the content in season has been slacking a little bit, but that is only because we've been working on something major and it's been taking a lot of my time, energy, and focus, which will pay off dividends and a multiplier in the long run. The content will be 50 times better once this is all solidified, but make sure that you know I'm working hard, and we will continue to pump out as much content as I possibly can in season. Week 11, rankings, must start, must sit, players. Tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling, and let's eat. All right, well, I got my rankings pulled up. And for those of y'all that are big dog members, again, bdge.store forward slash community where you can get the weekly rankings. Y'all can follow along. We're going to do just a little bit on the quarterback front and then mainly spend our time on running backs and wide receivers. The one guy that I have noticeably higher than consensus is Ryan Tannehill. I got him up at quarterback eight. Consensus has him down at quarterback 12. All right, well, Ryan Tannehill is going against Houston and he's playing at home. And I know Ryan Tannehill hasn't taken the step up that we thought since Derrick Henry has gone down, but they've played some really fucking tough defenses at Indianapolis, at the Rams, home against the Saints, right? It doesn't get that much more difficult than that slate of games. He has gone over 18 and a half fantasy points in three out of the last four games, which is not something you could say for the majority of quarterbacks. Love the matchup for him. They have guys like Justin Herbert over him. They have Joe Burrow over him. The, the Raiders have been much better on defense than giving him credit for. I, I really like Ryan Tannehill all the way up at quarterback eight. Great matchup. Uh, I think this is kind of like his explosion game in the post-Henry era. Let's run down the week at running back. So I have uh, the one of the biggest ones that stick out to me here. The way that ECR set up at expert consensus rankings on fantasy pros is there's a lot of guys that submit the rankings. So sometimes it takes a while for things to readjust. So some of the dudes here might seem obvious, but I have Alvin Kamara and I have him pretty low, to be honest with you. I got him as RB14 and I'm not sure if he's even going to play this week, but if he does, I'm going to put him into like the high end running back two range. He's got the MCL sprain, which he's dealing with, which he can't play with this week. Um, that being said, Mark Ingram showed well. So I think Mark Ingram has a role in this backfield at Philadelphia, no matter what the case is. I think Kamara, if he's used at a high capacity, will be in the passing game. So if Kamara's playing, you're obviously playing him. He's in your lineup. But I don't think I can consider him an RB1 
one, although I have him ranked higher than a lot of ECR plays. Uh, in tonight's game, we have Mr. Damian Harris at Atlanta. I have him up at RB20. Consensus has him at RB26. I might be a little bit too high on him, given that Ramondre Stevenson broke the fuck out. But it looks like the, uh, Damian Harris is off the injury report. So it looks like he will suit up. It looks like he will likely have the role that, uh, that he had pre Injury now that's probably going to come down a little bit. I mean, Damian Harris at Atlanta, had he had the role that he had pre injury, would probably be a top 15 running back. But now he's going to be sharing a little bit more of the work with Ramondre Stevenson. I think Ramondre Stevenson has probably earned a spot in this lineup. The dude was fucking chucking dudes around, right? The dude was spitballing, the dude was rocking last time he was out on the field. So I expect Stevenson to have a spot in the lineup. I think that probably, if anything, takes away from Brandon Bolden, maybe a little bit from Damian Harris. And I could look like a fucking idiot and Stevenson has a bigger role than uh, than I depend. But I think both of those guys are actually startable. So I have Damian Harris at RB20. I have Stevenson at RB30. So he's still startable, in my opinion, tonight. I think the Patriots will control the ground game. I think they just control the tempo of the game overall. And it just leads to, you know, Mac Jones has not been a high-volume passer. He's getting 20 to 25 attempts a game, and it's leading to a lot of running back work. This is a great offensive line, great matchup. So I like Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson if you are in a pinchy pinch. Right behind him, actually, I have Michael Carter at 21. So I actually have Damian Harris over Michael Carter in my rankings. My problem with Michael Carter comes down to two words this week, Joe Flacco. OK, Joe Flacco is just not who you want. It's crazy. Like you you want so badly Mike White to be the quarterback, even Zach Wilson. At this point, I would take it. But I believe Joe Flacco is cementing it as the starter this week. And it's actually what I said on uh, Monday's live stream. I think there was a good chance that happened. And we don't know what Joe Flacco is going to do under center now. You look back at last year, Joe Flacco had a game or two heavily, heavily targeting guys like Jamison Crowder. So I think he's more likely to go downfield than these short little dump offs that like Mike White was providing us. So Michael Carter, good matchup against Miami, but I don't know if he's going to get the passing volume that he's been getting the last few weeks. So Michael Carter, I have down at running back 21. What are other, some of the other big gap running backs I have here? Kenyon Drake, I have seven spots higher than consensus up at running back 28 versus Cincinnati. Consensus has him at running back 30. Five. Kenyon Drake is a guy who uh, has been super involved in the passing game the last few weeks. Last week, he was not, though, and it was when Jalen Richard returned. I don't know why. Like Kenyon Drake had been playing so well, and then Jalen Richard returns, and we're just like, we're going to give all that work to him. Makes no fucking sense to me, but Jalen Richard left the game last week with a rib injury, and let me check real quick if we have any update on it, but I don't expect him to play this week. No new updates on it, but if Jalen Richard misses, then this role is going to go back to Kenyon Drake, where it's a... It's a fruitful role, all right? Eating all the damn fruits. He's getting the carbs. He's getting the sugar. He's getting the fiber, and he's staying fed. So Kenyon Drake's a guy who put up these numbers, and they're playing against Cincinnati, where Cincinnati's got an underrated run defense. However, they can absolutely be beat through the air, through the running back position. So I feel pretty confident with Kenyon Drake as like an RB3 flex play in my lineup this week, assuming Jalen Richard does not play. Uh, we have both Buffalo Bills running backs, like I want nothing to do with either of them. I have Zach Moss at 36 when the consensus is up at 27, which I think is ridiculous. I have Devin Singletary at 37 right behind him when the consensus has him at consensus has him at 32. Also ridiculous. Um, who else do I have here? Some guys that you might be interested in, I guess, knowing that are kind of like popular names for this week. It's Deonta Foreman, I have up at running back 25. And consensus has him at running back 28, so I'm a little bit higher, but top 25 running back for me this week because, I mean, we saw him start to take over the majority of the volume in this backfield, right? Since Henry's gone down, AP has more carries in him, but Foreman has finally started to uh, catch up to him in like 10 zone carries and just overall volume and carries, and he surpassed him last week. Now they get a matchup against Houston. The problem is like whether we know if um, what's going to happen on the goal line, right? Because this could be a game where... Foreman is more efficient, which he has been than Peterson, but Peterson gets the actual goal line work, and that obviously torches fucking everything when it comes to fantasy. But I think Deontay Foreman's a pretty good start, and I got him up at running back 25. The other, I guess, like semi-notable guy here is Alex Collins, who I have six spots lower than consensus. I got him at 39 when consensus has him at 33. Alex Collins is starting to move into that like unstartable position. He is like the early down back. It doesn't look like Chris Carson is going to play. But this offense is just so anorexic, brother. They they just don't have the volume. Russell Wilson's like not healthy. They don't have the volume enough to like support. They they could basically support like one high-end player each week. And it's really never going to be Collins. 
like it's either DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett. It's never like three different guys at once. It's barely ever two different guys at once. Collins is starting to lose a lot of passing work. He's not even been good in the ground game against Arizona. Tough defense. So like I really don't like Alex Collins at all this week. Let us move over to the wide receiver position. Chris Godwin, I have down at wide receiver 16 when consensus is at wide receiver 10. We'll have to see. You know, I, I still think the foot hin injury might have been hampering him a little bit in terms of effectiveness. He did get a lot of volume. He, he ran a lot of routes and he looked fine, I guess, but he didn't produce at a high level. And with Antonio Brown, let me check. We have an update from an hour ago. It says, looks like Bucks wide receiver Antonio Brown is getting closer to return. Brady threw some routes to him for about five minutes before AB had inside. Looks like the ankle isn't 100% yet. Okay, so it might not be there yet. If he is playing, that's a huge down, downgrade to Chris Godwin. I just don't think like Godwin's ever shown us the ceiling that Mike Evans has. So I have Mike Evans up at wide receiver eight. I think this is a beautiful matchup for him against the Giants. I have Godwin down at wide receiver 16. I have Lockett down at wide receiver 21 when his consensus is 16. Kind of what I just spoke about in terms of Russell Wilson. Like last game, clearly not healthy. Look, might have been his worst game ever as a pro. Um, very little accuracy downfield. Very little accuracy all over the field. He'll be a little bit healthier this week, obviously. Another week rested on the finger. But I need to like be able to see it before I'm starting to confidently put Tyler Lockett as a high-end wide receiver too. If there's a guy that I'm confident with in this offense is much likelier to be DK Metcalf than it is Tyler Lockett. So he is a little bit down in my rankings compared to consensus. Kadarius Tony is probably my biggest discrepancy between myself and the experts. I'm stupid. They're really smart. I have Kadarius Tony up at wide receiver 28, my highest ranked wide receiver on the Giants. Consensus has him at wide receiver 39. So barely inside the top 40. My thing with Kadarius Tony is like you look at the guys behind him, Emmanuel Sanders is right behind him, but it's Jacoby Myers, Cole Beasley, Corey Davis, Brandon Ayuk. I don't love those guys above him. I like Tony there because his weekly ceiling is so fucking high. Like, we've already seen him do it. He pulled off a game that none of these guys are even capable of having in their range of outcomes. Like, none of them are going to be able to pull that off. Tony's floor might be able, a, a little bit lower than uh, Jacoby Myers or Sanders or Beasley or whoever the case may be in that list of guys. But all those guys are in the same tier to me from what they're likely to produce for you on a weekly basis, where Kadarius Tony is head over heels, the guy that can actually win you your week, right? We saw 170 yard receiving performance out of him, like really, really big game. And I want that type of play in my lineup, right? He was a little bit banged up, but they had the buy and now coming off the buy, their offense is almost at full strength. So Kadarius Tony is a guy that I want in my fantasy lineup, another talented rookie wide receiver in New York. In the Big Apple is Mr. Elijah Moore, who I have up at 34. Consensus has him at 41. Elijah Moore just looks like he's on that project uh, trajectory of a second-half rookie wide receiver breakout that we see year in and year out. Joe Flacco, of course, again, does give me a little bit hesitation, but it seems like the Jets are more willing to throw him out there and put him into situations that are obviously producing fantasy points. He's got three touchdowns over his last two games. So for Elijah Moore... I like him a little bit more cons than consensus. I do have Corey Davis up at wide receiver 32 with more at 34. So if I'm playing one of them, the matchup is great against Miami, but I would probably rather play more than more. That didn't make no fucking sense, but y'all got the point. What else do we got here? Jarvis Landry, I have 10 spots lower than consensus. He's been terrible since OBJ's gone, and that was you know kind of a miss by me. I thought he was going to have more volume. I thought he was going to have more downfield throws, but all the volume has gone to the running backs or a variety of tight ends or downfield to guys like Donovan Peoples-Jones. It just doesn't seem like Jarvis Landry is a big part of this offense. They're playing against Detroit. Detroit, low-key, just, just keep a really close eye on practice reports out of Detroit with Jared Goff. There's a chance he misses this week. If that's the case... Like, they're at home against Detroit. They they got to be, like, 10-point favorites at least. Nick Chubb might get 25 carries in this game, and they might need to throw the ball 16 times overall. So Jarvis Landry, a guy who's getting, like, seven yards per target, if he gets five targets in this one, y'all can do the math. It's not going to be pretty. So his floor has just absolutely plummeted through the, through the fucking basement. His ceiling has not been there. So I like Jarvis Landry a lot less than I like a lot of other players. Marcus Johnson, I have 18 spots higher than consensus, up at 42. I think he's a very viable flex play. Consensus has him at 60. They're playing against the Texans. Again, I think there's going to be a Ryan Tannehill breakout game. Great fucking matchup against the Texans. Marcus Johnson has shown it since Julio has left, so I think he's their de facto wide receiver too on a team that doesn't have a real pass-catching tight end or running back. So Marcus Johnson can definitely be thrown into your flex plays. Let's move over to the tight end position real quick. Not a lot of huge changes or discrepancies here for me. Uh, Dallas Goddard, I have eight spots higher than consensus. 
but that's probably because a lot of the expert rankings don't have him in their lineup because of the concussion thing. If he's out, you're obviously taking him out. Uh, uh, I'm flabbergasted right now. I mean, we have Kelsey, Kittle, Waller, Andrews, Pitts. I'll just read off my fucking rankings to you. Um, when they're supposed to be exclusive. Pitts, Hawkinson, Gesicki, Henry, Dalton Schultz, Fryermuth, Dan Arnold, Goddard, Knox, Ertz, Conklin are my top 15. Not a lot, as you can see on the right side, differentiating myself and the expert consensus rankings there. Um, so that being said, that is the finality of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something from it. And again, again, y'all can go to bdge.store forward slash community to get the rankings where you'll get our rankings you'll get to be able to sign up for our discord you'll be able to join dynasty leagues in the offseason if you want them you get our exclusive waiver wire rankings and article and fab guidance each tuesday morning dynasty rankings all that shit comes with the bdge membership all right so if you're new make sure you subscribe and hit the thumbs up button if you're old make sure you hit the thumbs up button unsubscribe then resubscribe for the fucking thrill of it let's go enjoy your thursday I'm not watching the Falcons-Patriots game tonight. I don't think I need an explanation for that. I love y'all, and I'm out.